the uh, case study on the banking system, which will be covered in your midterm. So I'm going to make the source code available today, so it's more important for you to see how you can implement the methods we're going to talk about today. I would like to, first of all, get to uh, uh, one of the methods first. If you can recall, if you go to your banking system tester from Monday, so remember we actually implemented the uh, get description uh, method from the client class, right? So that's something I would like to get into that first. So we only define the get description method for the client. Let's have a look quickly. So if you execute the code, you will see that over here we say clients, for example, clients, client one, oh, sorry, here, over here, we say client Jim with a name has ID C1 and one accounts. That's what we had. Okay. The reason that we have such output is because if you go to, uh, let's say, go to the client class there, you can see that in the client class, we actually got the uh, get description method. We simply say description, client with first name, ID, and counter. Counter will keep track of how many accounts there are for this particular client, and then we return the description. Okay, all is good. So now, however, <clears throat> now I'd like you to see one thing here. Let's see the output again. So you can see over here, we'd say uh, client, for example, client mark has ID C3 and two accounts. But here we only say that we have two accounts, but with no details about what the account is, right? The account maybe has some ID, the account has also how many transactions there are, etc. So we would like to give more detailed description to the get description from the clients. That's something we would like to do, okay? So now the, the way, uh, actually I solved this problem actually yesterday, but I didn't do that on Monday, so that's why I would like to do it first before I get to the uh, deposit method. So the way to solve this is, so now I'd like you to show you something here. <coughs> if you go to the uh, clients class again, you will see that in the get description method here, we simply just ask how many uh, accounts there are by using the value of the counter. But what we could have done is to go through each account in the account array and then try to print out the details description for each of the accounts for these particular clients. That's what we could have done. I would do that. So I'd like you to do that first. So the way to do that is to make sure you try to define the get description method in the classes at all uh, at all the levels. So what I meant was, can I just copy this code here? Okay, just copy this block. Okay. We're gonna use that kind of. So now can we go to the uh, account class over here? So in the account class, we did not have a get description method, which we would like to add one. Okay, so over there, can you just paste whatever we got, and then we'll fix that. Okay, so now we're going to also define a get description method there, and then we'll say description initially empty, and now rather than saying clients, we'll say account. Account, so the information we got would be ID. Uh, let's not worry about the owner yet. Let's not worry about the owner, just the history. ID and history. So here, account, okay, has ID, uh, okay, account, let's say with ID, that might be better. Account with, okay, with no space, with, uh, with a space here, with ID, so here ID has how many transactions? Let's do this first. So now we're adding the get description method at the account level. So now we got this uh, get description at the clients and the account level, which means whenever we try to print out the clients, we can get more detailed description for the uh, accounts, right? Individual accounts. But how do we do that? So, so now let's go back to client class. So now we like to do more. Uh, now we are in the client class. So now we can say for <coughs> integer i is equal to zero, i less than counter, and i plus plus. Okay, so now for each individual uh, accounts, we would like to get their detailed description. And the way to do this is by calling the get description method on that account class. So here, first of all, uh, so we would like to say description plus equal. So now we have accounts at position i, dot get description you see we actually because we just define 
the get description method there. Okay, we are relying on the, the, the get description method in another class. And then we can say, let's uh, just pretty print it. So we can say description plus equal. Let's say I would like to have a new line here and also a tab. So these are you know the forward slash. These are the special escape sequences that we learned from the elementary program lecture. <coughs> so also good. Okay. So now we are basically we're just defining, we added a get description method in the account class. And then in the client class, we try to call that get description method on each account objects. That's what we have done. Okay. So now if you try to launch the program again, you will see this. You will say that you see client Jim has ID C1 and one accounts. And this is the one account that Jim has. They say account with ID ACC1 has zero transactions. Okay? And here they say that this is what Alan has. So now, now you can see that for Mark. You can say you can see Mark has ID C3 and two accounts. And then these are the two accounts. And for account number one, it's with ID ACC3. With uh, when account number two, it's ACC4. Just more information about the accounts. Okay, so now basically my point is, if you want to print out a detailed description for a particular object, you have to make sure you define a get description method on every relevant classes. So you can just call them and then do accumulate the strings together. Okay, that's what I want to say about this particular one. And you can uh, just have another, um, let me just do another one just to strengthen your understanding here. So now let's say, uh, for let's say for account, so have we got any transaction? I don't think we have got any transaction yet. So let's create some transaction objects here. So let's say transaction, let's say D1 is assigned to new transaction. Okay, let's say it's a deposit, let's say 100.5. Transaction D2 is assigned to new transaction. And then let's say also deposit, let's say $50.75. And then let's say we have a withdraw uh, transaction. Transaction W1 is assigned to new transaction. And it's a withdraw, let's say just uh, $20. $20. Okay, let's do that. And then let's see how we can add these three transactions into the uh, relevant accounts. <coughs> so remember, we have got actually uh, ACC one, two, three, and four. Okay. What about we do this? If we say ACC three dot add transaction D one and ACC three dot add transaction W one, which means we try to uh, deposit a hundred dollars and then withdraw fifty dollars, something like that. Okay, and then we say ACC four uh, account four dot add transaction, and then here we would say W one. Oh, sorry, D two. So different tra uh, transaction objects there. So now let's launch the program again. Okay, so now what? Let's see what we will see. So you can say some system the L dot line here so let's say add d1 and w1 into acc3 okay and here we would say add d2 and the, uh, just add d2 into acc4 okay after this we like to print out a uh, detailed description for remember uh, you can actually see that ACC3 and ACC4, they belong to client number three, right? So now I would like to print out the description for client number three. So now we should expect to see something like for client number three, his uh, first account, which is ACC3, has two transactions. And his second account, which is ACC4, has one transaction. Okay, that's something you should really try to follow. Once you actually get a complete solution, you know, try to follow the test code and see how you can draw the object diagram, which is quite important. If I do this, 
you can see now client mark has ID C3 and two accounts. Okay, and now we say for this particular account, which is ACC3, it has two transactions, which is D1 and W1, right? The one we the two we just added. And for account with uh, ID ACC4 has one transaction, which is W1, uh, sorry, the D2. Okay, so now one more thing. You can see for the transactions over here, we simply see how many transactions there are, but we don't have any details about each individual transaction. So that's something we would like to put. So now to solve this problem, we're going to apply a similar approach. So we're going to also define a get description method and a transaction class, okay? So that we can actually do <coughs> things like that. Okay, so I will, what I would like you to do is to go to the uh, transaction class over here. Uh, let me just go to your account class first. Can we just copy the uh, get description method here? Okay, just copy that. Okay, copy that, and then go to transaction class and just paste, and it will fix things. So here, rather than saying account with, you would say transaction with. Transaction with ID and then ID, uh, you can say is is a okay is a so it's either deposit or withdraw. So in this case, we can use an if then else statement. We say if the type happens to be uh, D, so that means it's the deposit. So we can say description plus equal. Deposit, and otherwise it is, must be a withdraw. Description, oh, description plus equal uh, withdraw. Withdraw. Okay, so you can get rid of this space here. Okay, and then it's a withdraw of what amount? So now you can say description plus equal. Of. So now amount is the attributes. Of course, you can format your the, the string in whatever way you like. I'm just giving you one example of amount uh, dollars. Okay. So now we just define the uh, get description method at every level, at the client, account, and transaction level. So now the, the the missing step is to reuse this get description method in the account class. Are we done with this? Okay, I'll just give you some time to type. And then let's see how we can use it. <coughs> okay, so now let's go to the account class. So now over here, so other than, in addition to just saying how many transactions there are in the history for this particular account, we're going to go over the uh, accounts, uh, the transactions. So integer i equals zero, i less than counter, Count, I believe. I plus plus. Is it count or counter? It's a uh, history is counter. Okay, it should be counter rather than count. <coughs> counter here, and then we'll say s uh, description plus equal. So now the history at position i is a transaction. We can say get description, the one we just defined. Okay, and for each one of them, we can just uh, format that a little bit better. So let's just say new line, and then let's say two tabs, since we got one tab for each uh, account. Okay, so you can actually review actually how we define the description at every level. We just uh, take it back. So now if you go back to the banking system tester here, and now if you launch the program, this is what you get. Okay, especially pay attention to this. Okay, we can see that we say that for client Mark, he has Mark is the name of the client, ID C3, and he has two accounts. And now, this part here, this part here, is the return value for the get description method from the first account. And this part here is the get description method return value from the second account. Okay, so now this line here to say transaction with ID T1 is a deposit of $125. So that's the get description method return value from the first transaction of that particular account. Okay, that's uh, how you do the output.
Any questions about this? Or you're lost? Kind of lost? Okay. Uh, why, why don't I recap? To, to see uh, what, what, we, what we need to do. Okay, let me tell you this. Uh, why don't we try to uh, get a debugger and try to see what's happening? Okay. Can we just put a breakpoint here? Let's say, just right here. When we try to say client three that get description. Okay, I think that might be the easiest. Okay. Can we just say run debug as Java application? If you do that, you can see now we're stopping here. So now step at this line right before we try to say client three dot get description. Okay. So now let's step into it. So now we are in the uh, get description method in the client class, right? Okay. Let me maximize that. So now we are here. So you can see now we are going to get initially empty string, and then so now if you see the uh, variables here, description is still empty. As soon as we say this, so now it's a client mark. Right? And then client mark has ID C3. So far so good. And now you can see that we are trying to go over each of the accounts for this particular clients. Okay. And then let's say for this one here, we simply say just append new line and new tab into it. So now you can see we are trying to call the get description method from another class. Okay. So now if you step into it, you can see accounts I. Is the uh, so i is currently just zero, so which means we are looking at the uh, first account for this particular clients, and then for that particular client uh, for that particular account, we try to call the get description method from there. So now if you step into it, you will see that. Uh, let me just go again. So now if you step into it, again, step into it. So now we are in the disc uh, get description method. In the account class, we used to be in the uh, client class, but now we are in the account class. Okay, now in the account class, we are trying to get the description for this particular uh, account objects. Okay, so now you can see that we got. If you see the uh, variable here, description here. So now we have account with. You can see the value here, account with, and then has the ID and has two transactions, right? So now we want to print out the details for each transaction for this particular account. So what you would do is, <coughs> so now you can see we're trying to run a for loop, and then we can see i is currently zero, which means we are trying to look at the transaction at position zero in the history array for the account objects. So now we're going to step into it. Okay, so let me just skip that and step into. Okay, step again, step into it. So now we are finally in the get description method for the transaction class. Okay, you can see we actually got three get description methods in different classes in the clients, in the accounts, and also in the transaction. In three classes, we're trying to use them. Okay, so now in the uh, transaction level, we have no further call to any get description method. So we are pretty much done. So now if you can look at the uh, uh, value for description. So now you can see that it's now transaction with ID T1, right? So we are gradually accumulating the string. It's a deposit and then of this much money. So now we are done with the first transaction and then we just keep going. Okay, that's what's happening. Okay, that's something you have to look into and then to see what's the big picture here. So we got three get description method defined in three different classes in the client, in the account, and also in the uh, transaction classes. And then we're trying to use them. <coughs> or if I may draw like a branch diagram, when I say client three dot get description okay when I was trying to execute this and somehow it is going to make use of for example client free dot uh, accounts at position zero and then dot get description 
and then when I try to call this one here, somehow it is going to get into client three dot account zero, and then so that's an account object and the history array. So first transaction in that particular account dot get description. And also, it's also going to make use of client three dot accounts zero dot history uh, one in this case because we got two transactions there, so zero and one dot get description. Of course, we're calling different versions of the get description. You can see that over here, if you see the context object here. So this is a transaction, and here is also a transaction. And over here, it is an account. Over here, it is a client. Okay, so you can see, to actually call the get description method from clients, we have to make use of the get description method from accounts. And to actually use, uh, to call that, we have to call the uh, get description method from the transaction. Okay, that's how the uh, <laughs> things work together. We will have something like this, which is an equals method, which we will do as well. Okay, so we better get used to this. Okay. <coughs> okay, so let's. Uh, that's about the gate description, which I didn't talk about on Monday, so uh, it's good to clarify things. you actually see the source code later today. I'll make them available. Okay, so now we would like to, first of all, go back to the uh, client class. And remember, this is what I left to you as an exercise, right, on Monday, to see how you can do the uh, deposit. The idea about doing this deposit here is you want to find out which account for this particular client has the ID? <coughs> like uh, the first parameter there is ACC ID over there. So once we locate this account here, we're going to deposit into that particular account. To deposit into that, to that particular account, we have to add a transaction into it. Okay, that's something we're gonna do. Okay, let's do that step by step. <coughs> I think I draw the diagram already on uh, Monday. So that's something you should refer to back to your notes. Okay, so now, so remember, I, this is what I said. First of all, we have to check to see if ACC ID is an existing account. How do we check that? So we have to make sure that uh, the account ID exists. So how do we do that? So what you can do is you can simply run a for loop. So Boolean account ID exists. Let's say initially that's uh, simply just uh, false, okay? So as soon as we find out there is any ID that is equal to this ACC ID, then we are done, okay? Otherwise, it will remain false throughout. So we would say for integer i equal to zero, i less than, so we are really making use of your knowledge from the loops from the previous exercises. So now uh, I think that should be count, right? Counter, okay. Counter, okay. Counter, and then i plus plus. Okay. So now we'd say that. What about I say this? Uh, let me just change the name. That's easier for you to understand. Let's say found acc id. Let's say we found that. What as soon as we found that, <coughs> then that means uh, the account id exists. A better name. As soon as, uh, as long as we didn't find it, we haven't found it. Found ACC ID. As as long as we didn't we haven't found it, we're going to remain in the loop. Okay. So here we're gonna say uh, this. Um, what should I say? I should say that found ACC ID is assigned to. Okay. Assigned to. Uh, Accounts at position i dot equals acc id. 
because I'm actually walking through the account array for this particular client, so for each one of uh, for each account objects, I'm going to get their ID, of course. Sorry, this is wrong. So I should really say ID here. That's very important. I'm checking to see the ID of that particular account is actually equal to the ACC ID I'm looking for. Okay, that's uh, just using the dot notation. <coughs> Okay, once this is done, so now we can say that if the, uh, a, uh, let's say if we have found the ACC ID, then we can do something. Okay, we can actually start doing the deposit. Otherwise, let's say this, if it is not found, the ACC, uh, let's say, ACC ID is not valid. It simply doesn't exist. Because it's just uh, the L dot, line let's say uh, in this case you can say <coughs> account ID plus ACC ID does not exist otherwise it does exist so we're going to do something else okay so we will find that we actually need <coughs> checking process to see if the account ID is actually in the, uh, in the accounts quite often. We get, we, uh, we, at least we need this for deposit, we also need this for withdrawal. So it's actually not so good to repeat this loop here to find out whether the account ID exists or not in the account array. So it's better that we factor this out into a helper method, this process here. So we did some uh, like a similar exercise on in the class. So let's see how we can do this. So what I would like to do is to factor this out into a helper method. Okay, you can see over here the information that we need that we need in order to see if the account ID is there or not is just this parameter here. That's the only information we need. Okay, so this is how we're going to do it. Okay, so we're going to say we're going to create a new method here. You can say boolean. Uh, let me just create a method first. So I'm putting here, putting that here. So, uh, helper method for finding if the uh, input account ID exists. Okay, so now let's say it's going to return a Boolean variable, a uh, Boolean value, and then account ID exists. Okay, and then what you will get is Pretty much like this, you know, just like a string ACC ID. <coughs> and we can simply just cut this code here and paste it here. And then eventually we can just return found ACC ID. Put it here. So that's a helper method which we can reuse for as many times as we want. At least we can do for deposit and withdrawal. So now here we can say again, we can say boolean found ACC ID is assigned to uh, account ID exists and then ACC ID. So we're just reusing it for the first time. Okay, I'll give you time to type. So of course to create a helper method, just take practice. It might seem to you like a magic right now, but I think. Uh, you just gotta do as many practices, practices as you can. Let me see how you can pass it out here. You just take practice. Uh, my point is, if you, if you find out any particular fragment of code in your class has to appear many times, so that means you really have to factor it out into an output method. That's my point. <coughs> For example, in midterm, what I could have asked you to do is to say, well, let's see this class here. I'm actually using this fragment of code for multiple times. How can you factor out, factor that out into a help method? And define the help method. That's possible. You better study this case study very carefully. <coughs> okay. Of course, you still got, uh, still got more than a week to prepare. So uh, do collect your questions and come to uh, the tutorial sessions. Okay, that's one thing. <coughs> so here, in the case where the account ID does exist, 
So now we're going to somehow to find out how uh, how we can actually uh, improve it. Okay. So now let me. So that's uh, so here. If the account ID actually exists, then somehow I need to know where it is, right? <coughs> Let's take this. Some diagram here. So this one does take a little bit of thinking. Okay, so now let's say we have clients three. <coughs> okay, we have accounts. Um, accounts is an array. Let's say we have all the way to this 0, 1, 2, up to 9. Let's say currently we have three account objects. Let's say three. Okay. So each one of them is account. Okay, let's say for the first account, as an ID, second one, and the third one. Okay. So this one is ACC1, ACC2, ACC3. So now, if I try to say this, if I try to say clients 3 dot deposit, let's say I want to deposit into ACC3 with $100. If I do this here, so sometimes I need to look case to see where SEC3 is. In this case, that should be in position 2 of the array, right? So now I not only that I need to know the, that this account does exist, but also I need to know where it is in the array so I can access to it. So now, <coughs> it seems that our helper method here only tells us whether the account exists or not because either true or false. But it would be better if we can improve the return value a little bit. So rather than returning just true and false, why don't you tell me as well where where the account uh, where that account object is? Because in the case where the account I, uh, the account object actually exists, in this case it will just tell me it's two. If I say client three dot deposit acc two, then you would <laughs> then you would tell me it's in position one. And in the case let's say the account ID does not exist, just tell me it's minus one, because minus one is not a valid index for the array. Okay, so now I'm going to improve the uh, this helper method a little bit to say if the <coughs> account object exists, return its position or index uh, in the accounts array. Okay, otherwise, it doesn't exist, return, and invalid index minus one. Okay, I'll we'll, we'll show you how to use it. Okay, so now, it will only require a very easy extension to this method here. So now, what we can do is just return i. Okay, and then I'm going to change this to just int. Because, uh, okay, so now <laughs> I just have to. So, somehow, if you recall our uh, lecture on the loops, so whenever we have this loop counter i here, uh, this i is only declared within the scope of the for loop. So, you cannot use it outside the for loop. If you want to use it, so there's a small trick to this, okay? Uh, we have to move this outside the loop. Okay, that's the trick. Okay, that's but again, the source code will be available to you, so you should really uh, study carefully on that. So now, so that means if the account does, uh, so initially, <coughs> so let me do something here for you. Okay, let me. Uh, okay, so let's say 
next integer, let me just improve this method here so you don't really get confused. So we don't need this Boolean variable anymore. Okay, what we need is the eventual index we're going to return. Okay, is equal to minus one. Okay, let me put a comment here. Index of the <coughs> account with ACC ID. Okay, that's the eventual index we'd like to return, which is index here. Okay, so now for the for loop, we are still going to have the loop counter i here. So I'm just going to change the uh, version for you, so that's easier. Integer i here. Okay. So let's say we don't have any early exit, just to avoid any comfort, uh, just make it simpler. So what we're going to do is to have to say if the current one we're looking at is equal to the ACC ID. Okay. If it is the case, then we assign index to be i. Okay. So let me see why I got this compile time error here. Yes, thank you very much. Thanks so much. Yes, exactly. Okay, let me explain this method again. So we have two integers here. So we have in the line number 65, we declare a variable called index initially minus one. If we ever get a chance to change that to some valid index, that means the ACC ID does exist in the array. If we didn't get any chance to change that, that means the account ID does not exist. It remains to be minus one. The only place we can change that is the condition in 67, which says if the current account we're looking at has the ID that is equal to ACC ID, then we'll set it to be I. Okay, it's rather simple. Okay, so now we gotta do this. So now let's say here, let's go back to deposit with the integer index is assigned to this because it returns an integer. So now we can say if index that we return is equal to minus one. Okay, that means the account does not exist. Otherwise, it does exist. Okay, you have the option here. You can either you can say equals equals minus one, or you can just say less than zero. It's up to you. Okay, oh, just put minus one. Okay. So otherwise, now we're going to use the index to actually do some uh, do something. Okay. So now. <clears throat> So we have to add, so we have done so far if uh, these, so we have done so far. So now we have to create a transaction for this particular deposit. So transaction here, and then T is assigned to new transaction, okay? So now there should be a deposit with the amount, amount. So we are using the amount over here. So if we say 100, so that should be a transaction object uh, with type T or E with the amount 100. So now we are now going to add this particular transaction into the accounts history. Okay. So now we're going to say this. Accounts array at position index, which was returned by this helper method here. And then dot add transaction. And then we say T over here. And we are done. Stare at this method for moments. Okay, uh, we do need time to think. <coughs> and look at that. It's really important. Let's get this clarified first because withdrawal will be almost the same. Okay, let's figure this out first. <coughs> Again, in line number 77, we are trying to figure out, let's say if we try to do client three dot deposit into this particular account with the ID, ACC3, uh, with $100. First of all, we need to find out which account objects, if any, uh, has the ACC3 ID in the array over here. And we need to know where it is. In this case, it's in position two. That's why the index will tell you. The index value from 77. And then we say that well, if the index value you got is minus one, that means such an account does not exist, so you cannot do any deposit. Otherwise, from line number 82, the else branch would say, that, oh, okay, the account does exist, so we can do deposit. And the way we do deposit is, by, is, by, is, is as follows. Now we're going to say that for 
There's an ACC3 here. He has the history array. And initially, it's simply just an array of, let's say, size 10, 0, 1, all the way to 9. Okay. What we gotta do is to, first of all, create a transaction object first that corresponds to this particular deposit. Transaction here, and then the type and the amount. And the type is simply because we're doing deposit, so that should be D. And the amount is 100. And then we have to somehow, so let's say the history was, is currently empty, so you have to add it to the first one. Do that. But that one was already defined in the add transaction method in the transaction class. So you can simply call that. Okay, let me make some comments for you. <coughs> so here you can say create a transaction object for the deposit. Okay, and here um, add the transaction objects to the account which has ID ACC ID, right? Yeah, maybe a struggle with this uh, over the holidays with this and then come back to me for questions. That might be easier. Ah, very important method to understand, actually. Very important. Do you have any questions? Or you want to study maybe a little bit for that? Study, okay. Very good. <coughs> it's not easy. You know, it's not easy. It's, uh, it does require attention. Okay, very good. So now that's the deposit. And I would like to do withdraw as well. Okay. So now, can we just copy this part here? Withdrawal would be incredibly similar to that. Incredibly similar. Paste that. Of course, I gotta fix the indentation a little bit. So I would like to say forward and shift to the left. Okay. So now I only had to change this to withdraw. Withdraw also you need to take account ID and the amount. Okay. And now the only place I need to change would be now it should be a withdraw transaction. And then I'm done. That's the only difference. Okay, you can see I can also reuse this account exists method. Okay, that's a uh, deposit and that's withdrawal. Okay, so now let's say this. If you go back to the uh, tester, banking system tester here. So now let's say it is system the L dot print line. Um, let me just a quick look. So what was the current status? So you can see that client 2, client Allen has one account. Okay, let's focus on Allen here. So Allen has one account, ACC2, and no transactions there. Okay, let's focus on Allen. Okay, Allen is C2. Okay, so now let's say they will now deposit into Alice's account with ID. Mm, sorry, let me see it again. For Alan, it's actually here. Uh, Alan, it's uh, ACC2, okay? With ID ACC2. Okay, let's see how we can do it, okay? <coughs> Client2 dot deposit, let's say, ACC2, okay? And then the amount, let's say $100, just make it easy, $100. And then I'll say client2, the same clients, dot withdraw. And then also ACC2, the same account. So there will be two transactions added to that account. Let's say $50, okay? So now, um, After this, I would like to print out the information for client two. So I would say system.l.printLine. OK, 
Okay, so I would say account, uh, I'll just say client2 to get the get uh, description. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, you can see now client Allen has this, uh, this uh, detailed description here. You can see how powerful description is. It can make it very convenient for you to know the information about the objects. So now you can see account with ID ACC2 has two transactions, one deposit and one withdraw. The deposit has $100 and withdraw has $50 with the proper T4 and T5. You can see also how the static counter actually makes sure all the transactions IDs are unique. Okay, so that's what we got. So now the next thing is how do you figure out the balance? Okay, how do you figure out the balance for the... Uh, uh, so to figure out the balance, so let's say this. So let's say we want to get a balance for, so let's say for example, if we say client2, which is Alan, client2 dot get balance with some account ID, let's say ACC2. In this case, because we got deposit $100 and withdraw 50 so the balance should be 50 right? 100 minus 50. Whenever you see uh, deposit, that should be plus. Whenever you see withdraw, that should be minus. Right? Good. Okay, <laughs> so now let's see how we can do the balance. So the way to do that is by defining an accessor method. So it would say it's going to return a double and say get balance. Okay, but we want to know which account we want to get a balance for. So we're going to say string ACC ID. Okay, we're going to follow something similar from deposit and withdraw. Can we just copy this part of the code here from withdraw? Just this part here. Okay. Okay, and then we're going to put it here. Okay, let me just fix the indentation here. Source, shift left, source, shift left, okay, like that. So now again, we're going to check to see if the account does exist. If it doesn't, you have to print out some error message. Otherwise, you can now do it. So now, let's figure out the balance here. Um, so let's say this. So you can say double balance. Let's say initially just zero. Okay, and eventually we're going to return the balance. Eventually. So now, let's see how we can figure out what the balance is. So now, let me give you maybe three minutes, uh, maybe five minutes to think about. Okay. So now, uh, iterate through the. Um, okay, let me do this first. So account. Because the account with this particular ID, we have to add, we have to figure out its balance, right? ACC. It's assigned to uh, the accounts array at index. So this is the account where we want to figure out the balance. Okay? Because you can see the index here tells us where the account is. Okay, so now we're going to going to go to that particular account. So now this is what you want to do. Iterate through the history array of ACC. Okay, and then add up the amount of deposit and withdraw transactions. Okay, that's what you would need to do. Okay, yeah, of course, you're gonna keep uh, accumulating the balance. Whenever you see the uh, transaction object is of type B, then that should be a plus. Whenever you see the uh, transaction object of type W, that should be a minus. Okay. Why don't you take a minute to see if you got any clue to do it, and then I will go over that. Okay. I know today is intensive, but I need to give out a solution before the midterm. So that's why I'm a little bit rushing a little bit. But since we have got a recording, you can still follow that after the session. Amazingly, we're only doing three methods today, but these are tough. 
not easy. Now, it may not be as bad as you might think, so you do have to look into what I did to them and to try to understand them. Don't we need another system square? Transfer, I can talk about that as well. We'll do that. Now that we have done uh, departure and withdraw, transfer is, is incredibly easy. That's what we do. Yeah. <coughs> okay, so let's just go over that now so you can study that later. So now what we need to do is to say integer i is equal to zero and the i less than acc dot counter. Not the counter for the clients, but the counter for that particular account. Okay, i plus plus. Okay, go over that, and then we'll say if. Well, you can say transaction t is assigned to uh, acc dot history at position i. Okay, <coughs> since we're going over the history. So now we want to say if t dot type equals equals d, then we're going to increment the uh, balance plus equal t dot amount. Otherwise, it's a withdrawal. Balance e minus equal t dot amount. Okay, that's it. So you can see uh, each method doesn't. Uh, uh, does not have many lines of code, but again, we are really trying to make advan uh, take advantage of the dot notation. So that's really the essence of the whole program. Okay, let's try. Let's try. <coughs> the way we can try it is by going to the client class, and let's just go back to the uh, get description method there. Oh, account method there. Mm, actually, just print out the. Uh, just want to get the uh, balance. Okay, so system the out dot print line. Okay, let's say balance account with ID plus with ID HCC two has balance. Okay, so now I'm just separating into two lines. Has balance. Okay, and then system the l dot print line. Okay, so now we need to figure out what's the uh, balance of that. So we know that's ACC two. So you can simply go to <coughs> client two dot get balance ACC two. Okay, which should be fifty. Yes. Okay, again, so the tester shows you the uh, result is correct, but I gotta see how to do it, right? Okay, so why don't we just make your life even harder by thinking about transfer? Okay, amazingly, transfer, I believe, will only take two lines of code, only two lines. So that's not a too bad, right? Let's see how we can do that, okay? So, Let's think about how you do transfer. If I want to do transfer, let's say, if I say client, <coughs> let's say client, oh, let's, let's find out which client has uh, actually two accounts. Let's see. Let me just point it out. So Alan has only one account, ACC2, so he cannot do any transfer. To do transfer, you gotta transfer one account to another account, right? So now what you can do is, what about I do for Mark? Okay, Mark is C client three. You can see he has two accounts, ACC three and ACC four. Okay, so this is what I want to do. I want to say client <coughs> client uh, three <coughs> dot uh, transfer. Transfer. I want to transfer from, let's say, from ACC three to ACC four. ACC three to 
ACC4. So you can see this is from and to. Let's say $20. So what does transfer really mean? That means I'm going to withdraw from this account and then deposit into this account. Agree? That's what transfer really means. But if we make it this way, then how? Because it says that a client made something and you can one of the accounts to one of the accounts to another client also. Yeah, you know what? Let's uh, simplify that. I think that'll be too too much to go to term. So let's say we simplify the problem a little bit. Okay. We say whenever you do transfer, it's going to be like a within a single client. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's just make, make that a change. Yeah, it's good that you brought it up. Okay, so if you're watching the recording, so we make the problem simpler. So now we're going to have a simpler problem here. I'm just talking to the computer. So basically, we are solving a simpler problem, which is already hard enough for you. Okay, so basically now we're going to do the transfer for particular clients. So say ACC3 <coughs> and ACC4, both of them are the accounts for the same clients. So now we're going to transfer from ACC3 into ACC4. So which means we're going to deduct money from this account and add money to this second account for this amount. Okay, as I promised, I believe only two lines are necessary. So if I try that over here uh, in the uh, client class, so void transfer, let's say <coughs> from account and string to account and double amount if you can make it simpler just say from and to just simpler okay first line withdraw from account amount second line deposit Two accounts, amount. Done. Two lines, as I promised. Two lines. Oh, but for like the previous account, we have to check if the account definitely exists. Very good question. But this one will cover that why. Because when you do the withdrawal. Oh, it actually has this. Exactly, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. <coughs> okay, let's have a look to see what's going to happen here. So if you go back to banking system tester here, so now system.out.println, let's say transfer, let me just see again for client number uh, three, so it's Mark. So let's have a look first. Remember from before we got actually these two transactions for Mark. So we got, actually you can, you can figure out the math later on, okay? So I just want to show you that it does work, okay? So let's say transfer uh, into Mark's account, uh, ACC3 into ACC4 with, let's say, $20. Okay, and after that, we'll actually get a balance. Client three, three dot get balance, ACC three, and also ACC four. Okay, you know what, let me do that properly. So you would say that, you'll say the following. You'll say, <coughs> balance of ACC3 before the uh, after the transfer. Yep, don't bother, uh, okay, yeah, ACC4 over here. Okay, so this is after the transfer. Let's also copy these two lines and see what's the change before the transfer. So that's much easier to see, right? So now we want to know ACC3 and ACC4. Oh, and also I need to write the line. Client 3 dot transfer, okay, 
So ACC3, ACC4, and then the amount, uh, 20. OK, before the transfer and after the transfer. Launch the code. So you can see that. Ah, can you see that? Before, it is 80.5, and after, it's 60.5, because we, we kind of uh, withdraw from this account. right? And now, for SACC4, it used to be 50.75. 50, 50, uh, 50 after that, it's 70.75, adding it to $20. Okay. okay, that's about the uh, deposit, withdraw, and transfer. Okay. <coughs> Okay, for the, re uh, the rest of the exercise, I would like to just bring some out. Uh, I was even thinking of to do the equals method for the banking system. But I think I don't have enough time to do that. That's okay. We can do that on Monday, but for that part, it's not going to be part of the lecture. Um, if we have time. So now I'd like you just to show you some simple examples for the equals method so you can get better understanding. Okay, so let's uh, just create a new class over here. Okay, let's do new class over here. Let's do the rectangle example that we did in the class. Okay, let's say we got rectangle. So now we have it's a brand new example has nothing to do uh, nothing to do with the banking system. Rectangle here. Say finish. And also let's have another one called rectangle tester. Oh, sorry, a rectangle collector. Rectangle. Collector. Okay, so now let's do rectangle class first. Um, so for rectangle class, we got two attributes, simple attributes. Let's say double. Uh, let's just make an integer, just easier. Integer length and integer width. So now we're going to do the following. We're going to say the Constructor for rectangle would be, we're just going to say integer length, integer width. Okay, you would say this dot length is assigned to uh, length. This dot width is assigned to width. Okay, now these two here. So now let's say somehow we want to define two rectangles are equal. If their areas are equal, so we need a helper method. Uh, we need a so you can say integer uh, get area. Okay, so how do we get the area for the uh, uh, rectangle? You can simply return length multiplied by width. <coughs> so now, in order to compare the contents of two rectangles, we need a equals method. Which returns a boolean, and then equals. Let's say the same name as a class rectangle. Let's say other. So let's say root two rectangles are equal if their areas are equal. Okay, can you complete a method for me? That should be very easy. This is how you can do it. Should be a one line solution, just return something. <coughs> yeah, return something. Turn. We're gonna say. For example, uh, let's say if I got two rectangles, R1 and R2. If I say R1 dot equals R2, so what I want to make sure is R1 dot get area is simply equal to R2 dot get area. That's what I want to make sure. Okay, that's true, then it's true. Otherwise, it's false. So now, to define the equals method here, you can see R1 is the context objects. So that, that's going to replace the, this in the method, right? And then here, 
R2 would be auto. Right? The one we should do over here is to say return this dot get area equals equals other dot get area. So basically, if you try to re uh, plug in the objects into this method here, you can see R1 is the context objects. So every occurrence of this will be replaced by R1. And every occurrence of other will be replaced by R2. So it's, it's, it's like a R1 dot get area equals equals R2 dot get area. Okay, that's exactly what you need. <coughs> okay, so now we are done with this. So let's create a tester. Another class, let's say rectangle collector tester. And then the main method. Okay, let's first of all create uh, rectangles first. Okay. Uh, rectangle R1 new rectangle. Let's say, uh, I think I took the, uh, okay, length first. Let's say five by two. Or well, five by, uh, let's say five by, I'm thinking, uh, five by eight, let's say. Okay, there was a typo here. Okay, and here, rectangle R2, sign to new, rectangle, Let's say it's 2 by 20. You can see the width and length, they are different, but the area should be the same, right? So let's try this. System.l.println. If I simply do r1 equals equals r2 plus, okay, remember you gotta put a parenthesis, r1 equals equals r2. On the other hand, if I have r1 dot equals r2, then I should get true equals r2. So now you can say r1 dot equals r2. Okay, so we're just doing so. The first one is doing reference comparison, and the second one is doing contents comparison. Launch the program, false and true. Okay. Then you can see uh, when we call the dot equals method here, it is first go is going to call the uh, uh, equals method in rectangle, which we just defined. Okay, <coughs> that's about the rectangle. So let's make things a little bit more complicated. So we want to say let's go to the rectangle collector class. Over there, let's say we just have one single attributes. Let's say it's a an array of rectangle rectangles. Let's say, of course, we need a counter here, and we would say this rectangle collector. Uh, let's also divide a constant here to say how many what's the maximum number of uh, rectangles you might have. So let's say final integer maximum number of Rectangles. Let's say it's 10. And now we can say um, rectangles is assigned to new rectangle array of size maximum number of rectangles. Yeah, we have done this many times already, of course. And also, you can explicitly assign this to 0. Of course, you also need to add rectangle, right? Okay, so here rectangle objects are. Okay, also, again, we have done this many times. So you can say rectangles at counter is assigned to R. And then increment the counter over here. Okay, so now. We have to define the equals method for rectangle collector, which I also talk about, right? Since it's an array, so somehow you have to go all, uh, iterate through the array, and for each rectangle, you have to compare. You have to compare them carefully. So let's say boolean 
equals. So let's say rectangle collector, the same name as a class. I'll say RC. I'll just say other, just to be consistent as before. Other rectangle collector. Okay. Let's say Boolean. Um, let's say, as I did in the slides, let's say we're going to compare one by one in each corresponding position. Let's say so far they are equal. Okay. Let's say so far equal will be true. So for integer i equals 0, i less than, just going over all the uh, uh, rectangles in the collector, i plus plus. And then we're going to say so far equal is assigned to um, rectangles at position i, which is a rectangle. You can call it equals method that we just defined over there. Dot equals, and then we can say uh, other dot rectangles at the same position. Okay, and then we're going to return so far equal. Now, of course, if you actually refer back to your notes for the loops, if I simply say this, it's going to be wrong, right? Unless I put a conjunction uh, symbol in front. So that's something you should really look back into your notes. But if you want to early exit, you can say so far equal. So this will work. And remember, if you go back to your notes for the loops, you got four possible ways to, to write things. So the way the thing I just showed that, that I just showed is actually wrong. Okay, but this one is correct. <coughs> Okay, so now that's about it. <coughs> Let's go back to tester here. So now I want to create rectangle uh, collector RC1 rectangle collector rectangle collector RC2 rectangle collector. So two rectangle uh, two rec collectors. So now I want to say rc1.at r1. Okay. rc2.at rectangle r2. So now basically each collector has exactly one rectangle. So one is r1, the other is r2. And we know already they are equal by you know contents. So now if I say again, can I just say, can I just copy this, these two lines over here? Can I put it here? R <coughs> RC1, RC2, RC1, RC2, RC1, RC2, RC, and RC. Okay, if you try this, okay, you'll see false for references and true for objects. Okay. So can we just try one more thing, okay, since we got, oh, okay, just one more thing, okay, one more thing. If I simply do this, rectangle, let's say R3, new rectangle, let's try to create two rectangles that are not equal, okay. Let's say simply uh, 3 by 4, okay, let me get another R4. Let's say 2 by 4. Apparently, they are not equal. So now I'm going to say this rc1 dot add rectangle rc3. rc2 dot add rectangle rc4. So now you can see the first rectangles, <coughs> sorry, r3 and r4. <laughs> you can see now for rc1, the first collector, it has r1 and r3. And for the second uh, collector, it has R2 and R4. R1 and R3, they are the same. But R2 and R4, they are not the same. So overall, these two collectors are considered as not equal. Okay. So now let's try that. You can see now it's also false, which is right. Because, he, okay. So now we're coming here. So let me just uh, comment this out. If you... Uh, comment out the following two lines, they will make 
RC1 and RC2 not equaled by their contents because R3's area is not the same as R4's area. Okay, that should be quite obvious, right? If you comment it back. Okay, I hope this example will help you actually to study the equals method. Right? Actually, I plan to do the equals method for the banking system, but just didn't have time. So maybe you can do that after, uh, maybe next Monday. Okay, that'll be it. So basically, the midterm is going to cover all the lab materials up to today. So please study uh, all the lab materials, especially especially the banking system. Okay. It's good that, it's good that you're here today, but you already listened to this once. But if you need to review that, you can watch the recording, and then maybe get back to me for questions. So there will be another two uh, two tutorial sessions before the midterm. One will be this Sunday from five to six as usual, and then next Wednesday from twelve thirty. Okay, we make use of uh, make use of it. But for next Monday, we have to cover some new materials, so there wouldn't be any uh, review session during the class. Okay, that's about it. And yes, you're free to go. <laughs>